Hey folks, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. Today I wanted to do this on my laptop and the reason why you see I mean I have the big desktop editor back here and so often or not I get a lot of people calling me up or emailing me or sending me messages saying look Jack I only have a laptop I can't do those edits. Well we're going to show you that you absolutely can. Now there's some limitations with laptops. One is they may not be as powerful as a desktop but I mean a lot of them are depending on how much money you spend. Two, you might have to worry about hard drive space. Maybe they don't have a big enough hard drive in them. The new solid state drives, uh, such as the MacBooks, the MacBook Airs, you know, they only have a 256 gig solid state drive. So it's not a lot of room compared to the terabyte drives that we're seeing more often now. So you'll see here, first of all, that we have a little bit different look there for this uh, particular episode. But we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you a little bit about depth of field. Now we know with the camera, we capture depth of field simply by changing our f-stop. If you have a better lens like an f1.6 or I'm sorry f1.8, f1.4 or a 2.8 you can get a really really shallow depth of field. Now what a shallow depth of field means is just very simply we've looked at on this show before is you take a photograph and the background is blown out. It's beautiful for portraits you can do it really easily with portraits with a really long lens. Uh, get further back and use your zoom lens and zoom in and you'll actually um, blur out, blow, I call it blow out the background, um, you know, or make the background in soft focus. But let's say you don't have it. You have just a kit lens on your camera and you can't really get that shallow depth of field that you're looking for. Well, that's okay because what we're going to do here is very simply... We're going to use Photoshop Elements to do that in. I have two pictures here, one that I have a really shallow depth of field, and the other one, not so much. So we're going to create that same look and feel. Let's go ahead and go to the computer screen here. So here's my two pictures I'm working with, these two different hats. I'm going to open these up in the editor. So let me just right click on this and open the editor. And again, I'm using the trackpad. I'm not using a mouse. I'm not using a Wacom or, or Wacom or, or any kind of tablet uh, to do this. So here's our two pictures. I want to rearrange these tabs. To rearrange the tabs, just pull them left and right and drop them. Okay. So again, we can just pull this over here. So now that's my first picture. This is my second picture. This first picture, we can see that there is a very nice shallow depth of field because you can see how the background is very nicely blurred out and the hat is in very much in focus. So that is a really, really nice effect. And we're going to create that now by hand because, let's, again, you have a kit lens. You can't get this, or maybe you're using a point-and-shoot camera, and you say, oh, I want to feature something, but I want everything else to kind of be blurred out in the background without cropping it up, because cropping is not always very pleasing. So let's go ahead and go back to the picture we're going to work with. The first thing we're always going to do is duplicate that background image. I've been telling you this. I just went back the other night and looked at some of my very first videos of Photoshop Elements, which was back in 2008, a much older version, and... It's funny because, uh, you know, I taught a lot of this kind of stuff, but I always tell you to duplicate your background image. Do that by hitting either Command J or Control J. Somebody said, Jack, what is that? Let me just explain. Command J is on a Macintosh or an Apple computer system. The Control J is on your Windows keyboard. Hold the Command or Control key down, hit J. Now we duplicated that background layer. Once we do that, what we're going to do now is we are going to make a selection of this hat. And folks, you can use any selection method you wish. I'm just going to use the regular selection brush. I'm going to uh, use the right bracket key, make my cursor a little bigger here. And I'm just going to use my trackpad. I'm just going to draw over the hat. And we're just going to go around the hat here. Make sure you get all the hat because if not, your edit is not going to really work right. It's going to look kind of weird. Once you get to hat, there's a couple places I see here that we are a little bit outside. Go down to subtract, lower your, your brush size or your cursor down a little bit using the left bracket key, and then just touch over where you don't want it so we can get the hat more uh, selected. All right, and maybe just a touch right about there. I see a little problem right there. And we'll just touch that up. There we go. All right, once you get the hat selected, what we're going to do next is we're going to go to select the pull-down menu. 
and we're gonna go to inverse. So we don't want the hat selected. It was just easier selecting the hat. We want the background selected. So do it inverse. Now we have the background selected. Once you have the background selected, once again, do a control or a command J. And what we're gonna have now is we're gonna have that background without the hat. You can see there. So the hat is now um, transparency because we have it cut out. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have to reselect these pixels. So what I want you to do is hold your command or control key down and click on the picture. Command or control key, click on layer two. That should be the utmost layer with only the background. Once you have that selected again, instead of selecting it by hand, go to filter, go to blur, and you know one of my favorite blurs is Gaussian blur. Go to Gaussian blur. And you can just move the radius up here and you can watch the background start to blur itself out. We'll make it really pronounced here. I'll just keep going up. All right. So we went up to about 48 pixels of blur. You don't want to make it unrealistic. So we're going to bring it back down a little bit. You know, I'm just going to type 20 in the box. So there, 20 radius for pixels. Click the OK button. And now you can see that we have that beautiful soft focus. We have that beautiful depth of field now. And if you want to apply more, just go back up to your select or go back up to your filter. Again, go back down to your blur and go to Gaussian blur and add some more. You can always change this and take it up if you think, well, I want to put some more on there. I will take it up to about 48. Click OK. And there you go. Once you're done, you can hit Command or Control D. That will deselect everything. And now you have that beautiful soft focus that you were so uh, much wanting to get. And you didn't have to spend all that money on a, on a big lens or an expensive lens. It was very, very simple to do in Photoshop Elements. Uh, I like this. Um, I use this a lot of times uh, with portraits. And I tend to use this, you know, sometimes with stuff like this because it really makes it uh, an interesting shot. And, and you bring that subject in focus. So folks, once again, thank you very much for watching my YouTube channel here at uh, 42 Technoman, or just search for Jack's Tech Corner. Uh, you'll find it with that. And I, I really appreciate you watching. I'm glad you subscribed to the channel. I hope you're learning uh, more about photography that you want to know about. And I hope you come back here often. Tell all your friends about it. Say, hey, if you have a camera, you might want to check out uh, that Jack's Tech Corner on YouTube, you know, 42 Technoman. And if you want to learn this stuff, you want to learn these tools, it's very simple to do for $40. Uh, that's the lowest price I possibly have seen anywhere on the internet to learn Photoshop. Elements. Some places charge you monthly. They want to charge you, you know, 50 bucks a month uh, and you got to pay every month to stay on their courses. I don't do that. You pay $40 one time and you're good to go. Uh, you can start learning. Do that at jtclearning.com. Look, it's right over my head. jtclearning.com. And you can pick up these great tips, learn all these tools, learn about the filters, learn about layers, and then you can start making wonderful edits. Because let's face it, folks, you're already taking beautiful pictures with your cameras. Now, why not learn to do a little bit of creative editing and uh, do some editing, learn the tools in Photoshop Elements. Uh, right now, there's Elements 12 and 13 up. Sign up, take that course today. But most of all, thanks for watching. I do appreciate you being here. And I appreciate you coming back each and every time a new video is posted. Take care, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.